Hello, this is voice acting coaching. What we're going to be doing here today is working with an original piece of dialogue that I have written. And uh, our guest, Josh, has created a character for this dialogue, as well as a scene to be happening while this dialogue is said. So we're going to be dealing both with the character, the scene, we're going to change it up, we're going to manipulate it, and uh, he's going to perform this dialogue for us today as this character. We're going to go back and forth, try new things, see what works, what doesn't work, um, and talk about voice acting and perform for the next hour. So thank you on this start of our journey, whether you're here with us live or on our YouTube video. Um, these will be coming out every Wednesday, and it's uh, done live every Wednesday as well. All of this long intro said, I'm going to start us by saying, will you introduce yourself, my friend, to our lovely chat? <laughs> Hi, I'm Josh. Um, I managed to get this um <laughs> not entirely sure how here we are josh would you mind telling us uh about the character that you have built pretty simple enough for this character i literally called him first mate bob <laughs> simplest name ever generic you know he, he's a simple guy um pretty much as this goes he's kind of tall scrawny put together he's pirate you know he, mm -hmm. he's first mate whatever he has a he left eye missing. He has an eye patch. He has a peg on his right foot where it was supposed to be. Because people cut it off. Fire it. You know, mm -hmm. what have you. <laughs> uh, pretty m he's a pretty basic enough guy. He was a first mate, very loyal to his captain, very loyal to his crew. And, uh, you know. You can introduce the line of dialogue. I'm going to have you read it, not perform it. Um, and then tell us about the scene that you're thinking for this dialogue. Okay. So, at least for line of dialogue, as I have it written here, it goes as, we can do this, men. For king... For country, for honor. Yes. Uh, you know, pretty much this rallying cry. I think um, Attack on Titan yes. ending scene, uh, my soldiers scream out, my soldiers rage, yes. that type of thing, right? Love that. So what I have for the scene set here, this is first mate Bob atop a city of rubble, pretty much. He's climbing on top, and he sees all these survivors. Okay. All these people, these normal enough people who are angered at what just happened to them. Their entire town was pretty much ransacked by this group of heroes, as it were. Mm -hmm. These heroes killed his captain, his crew, everybody. But he sees something there, like a little fire inside of everybody. Hey, I need to get everybody up. I need to get everybody moving. I need to get everybody to action. There is one last hope that we have in order to stop this, to stop their reign of terror for their justice, as it were. Uh. We need to put a stop to this. So for one last time, we can do this. For our king, for our country, for our honor, for those that have fallen. That type of thing, you know what I mean? I also really like this sort of character that you've built where he sort of like is in charge and we are on his side maybe, but the people that he's facing are supposed to be the heroes. They're supposed to be the ones we're on the side with, watching the show from, supporting but maybe we're, we're not. And so like, it's, that's really interesting for a scene idea. And I love this. For my folks on the YouTube video, all I ask when I do these sessions when building a character is that the person, or in this case, Josh, um, comes in with three adjectives that describe this character's core, their center, their personality. That is what I do to create character voices and create characters. And so I asked all of our guests to give us those. And then the rest of the information and details is as much or as little as they want. I made him passionate, distraught, and uh, the best one I feel, seething. Ooh. Pretty much this guy bubbling to this point. He's seen nothing but destruction from these guys. He's very passionate about this. He's been so distraught because all he's seen is the loss of his family, his friends, his captain, everybody. So he's just bubbling to this point, right? That That's yes. how I feel the best describes him. I love that. So those are our three words. Can you read them again for us, Josh? Passionate, distraught, and seething. Passionate, distraught, and seething because these are three ones that we don't necessarily want to change if we can help it those are the three that i want to try and keep our center from so that way if we do feel like we're trying new things and changing new things and they're just not quite feeling right or tasting right or whatever the case may be we can go well let's go back to our core three is what we have changed and what we're trying now true and meaningful to those original three characteristics? And if they are, then there needs to be another part we change. But if they aren't, then perhaps we need to take it back a step. 
So that's what those three core are for. So what I'm going to have you do is perform this line of dialogue. I'm not going to give you any uh, ideas before you start. I'm just going to have you go. All right, Josh, whenever you are ready, you may perform the line. We can do this, men. For king. For country. For honor. On the acting side of things, you did excellent. <laughs> there was this beautiful moment of when you were saying this, I could tell that you had passion in your voice, right? Because it was powerful and it was strong and it was also kind of focused as if you were speaking to someone in particular in the way that you were speaking. Now, passionate, again, one of our key adjectives that you gave us. So that's good. We're hitting there. So there are a few things that I want to deal with with this. What I'm thinking is, I like the passion, but I want to take this focus of I'm speaking to someone and I want to narrow it down and make it even more specific. He is in this scene where he's trying to rally his men. He's trying to uh, get them in this sort of one last battle against these people who have done a significant amount of damage, correct? What kind of damage have these other people done that they're fighting against? These people have burned villages, massacred many people, fathers, daughters, mm -hmm. grandmas, children, everyone in the name of justice from this other power that we don't get to see. Think of it like warring nations, except we don't understand the other nation because of how alienated they are. Okay. And essentially ended up honing in on his crew because of what his captain was doing. He was actively sabotaging his other nation because he understood what they were doing, all that they were killing and everybody. He wanted to have this free nation. Basically, the captain was ordering everybody to help. All those villages that were burned down were the villages of the families of the entire crew, pretty much. Okay. Everyone. And all of it was a trickle-down effect until eventually they got to the captain. Everybody else ran off. They killed almost everybody except him because he got trapped underneath that rubble that he okay. just climbed out of. They're not just a group of hero-slash-villains, right, that has burned a couple of villages and now they're on your hit list. They have affected your people, the people that are your friends, the people that are your family. They're maimed, they're dead, they're whatever. Your crew, right? The people who mean more to you than most families do have been significantly impacted by these villains. So if you were to speak to someone in particular in this crew, who do you think maybe you could be talking to in this crew? Most likely the captain. It would probably be the person who was the pinnacle of what we represented, the person who was leading us, the person who would be there in order to guide us to do our best. Why are you giving the speech that is supposed to invigorate, empower, get everybody on the side to get rid of their trauma and fight this final battle instead of the captain? Why is it you? Where is he? Okay. He I saw that. What else am I to do except step up? If there is nothing else there, I can't throw anything away. Everything else is already tossed away. The only thing I can do in that situation as first mate Bob is do my best as my captain would want me to do, as he would order me to. This is the energy I want to take into your next run of this line of dialogue. You are talking to your dead captain. Sure, you're talking to the rest of the crew. Sure, you're trying to rile them up. But the motherfucker who was supposed to lead this, the guy who was supposed to be in charge, is dead. He might be under your feet, for all you fucking know. He's gone. He's not here. And someone needs to do the job. So I want you to say it to everyone, but to say it to him. Wherever his spirit, wherever his body is, say it to him. And see what that brings out, okay? All right, whenever you're ready. We, we can do this, men. For king. For country. For honor. That was so much, like, more enthusiastic and also heartbreaking. We went from, like, okay, I know you're kind of, like, in this passionate place where you're a little, like, punchy and you're a little like this. And we took that and we added so many layers that now all of a sudden it's not just I am giving the speech, right? It is a mixture of 
pain and hurt, maybe anger, but also pride in who this man is and who you are, right? Tell me about how you felt when you were doing it this time. I want to make sure to actually give that moment of pause, almost as if to, I, I guess, think that metaphorically that his shoulder, that his hand was on my shoulder, right? Basically that I was being passed down this torch that it was okay for me to do this, that this is what he would want me to do in this situation, mm. that there was nothing else that I could help in that regard. That's what he would want me to do in that sense. And whenever it was for king, for country, most importantly for honor, you know, of course you have to do this for a king. Of course you have to do it for your country, for your fellow men, but most importantly, you have to do it for the honor, not only for yourself, but also the ones who have fallen helping you with the honor of the man who helped you. That's beautiful. The honor of the men who helped you and lost their lives along the way, including that captain with his little ghost hand on your shoulder, right? Um, there's a, something you said that I really, really love. And besides that ending bit, of course, um, and it was that this is what he would want you to do, right? It, it was a piece of of all the emotion that you might be feeling in this moment, your captain knows from day one when you are a part of his crew that there will be a day that he dies. And when that day comes, it is for you to step up into that spot, right? And so that was a really cool notion that I liked that you brought to this. I want to play with the anger a bit. I think that we have to keep in mind that it's not just a battle. This is kind of like the end all be all. You see these horrible people who have burned and done horrible things on the horizon, right? They're coming. Fuck those guys. <laughs> like there has to be a bit of yes. I, this is the moment I'm trying to rile my people up. I'm trying to like make them feel better. I'm a, in pain, both emotionally and physically because all my loved ones are dead. But also, God, do I want to slit a throat of one of those people right now, right? There has to be a bit of this anger. And so when you do it this time around, still think of who you're talking to, but maybe when you say we can do this men they're not listening they've heard this spiel over and over and over they have given up they don't give a single fuck that you are trying to rally them they don't want to fight anymore they would rather die than do this fight that they think they're gonna lose whenever you're ready you may go we can do this men King, country. That was good. There was some passion in there. I know probably for our chat and for my video a little bit, we're losing the, uh, the audio just a little um, because I think it's peaking a little bit, but that happens. Um, yeah, it happens. And I loved the recognition you had when you stopped and you paused and you realized, all right, we need to talk, crew. I need to inspire you to join this with me. How did you feel while you were doing it? For starters, I like to visualize uh, whenever I try to do scenes in general, mm -hmm. I like to visualize what's going on. Like I'm actually looking through their lens. And as you said, they're not acknowledging it at all. I just imagine myself staring on top of this big pile of rubble, almost like I'm on a throne and nobody's listening. These subjects, as it were, aren't paying attention. And whenever I saw that, it was almost disdain for the fact that we got to this point. Not even so much mad at them, but the fact that they managed to let themselves be lost this way. Mm. And that not even so much that I don't like the fact that I have to pick up this pace and do this. It's that I feel like I'm not prepared for it, but I have to do it anyway. Wow. Kind of almost that fear factor of, I don't think I'm ready for this role, but I, there is no other option right now. Wow. I have to do it, you know? A lot of actors, a lot of voice actors do visualize things when they're here and they're with the character, and it helps immensely. 
Um, it's not an end all be all. If it doesn't work, that's fine. But if it works for you, then we roll with it. We punch and roll and we go for it. So definitely keep this aspect of like visualizing things and being there in the moment. You described beautifully this thing that I think maybe neither of us prepared for you to experience. Anger at the situation. It was sort of frustration and being upset with everything and nothing all at once. Um, that was really interesting to me. Did you expect that to happen when you were doing this line of dialogue? <laughs> nope. <laughs> all new, huh? Oh, I love that. That's what I like to do is to have new experiences. <laughs> There's something I want to try is I want you to emphasize the word men and I want you to emphasize the word honor. So those two words in particular, I want to have more power and meaning behind them than the rest of the sentences that you say. Whenever you're ready, go right into it. We can do this, men, for king, for, for country, for... Honor. That was so good. <laughs> that was breathtaking. Holy shit. Like, <laughs> how was it for you? What did it change? How did it feel? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Too with the notion of what we had before we had to do that, where I wanted to take that pause, but I think at least in the moment I realized I can't take the pause audibly i have to, i have to let that resonate in my head before it even comes there i have to just make that click decision like i i have no time right the way i want to think about it they're coming there's no time for me to just stop my words mm. there might be an arrow coming through me in a second <laughs> there, there might be gunfire there might be cannonballs who knows there, there is no time for that i have to make this switch and i felt like whenever i had to say the men line like specifically the word it hit me right there i need to make sure they know because if they don't, we're dead. Not only that, our legacy will be nothing. These people that we that they think they're heroes of, they're going to wipe us off the map. There's going to be no history of us. It's going to be like Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Jack Sparrow, you yes. will have no record of your existence. Time for Pirates is over. I don't want that. And for me to be the last line, at least for this, the, the last line of defense, the final soldier on this battlefield having to basically ra round up the civilians since they're so dejected since they don't understand really i have to just pull them in best i can but i don't understand how to get to them so i only have to speak to them as i would my captain mm. as i would myself in order to get myself out of that situation mm. as it's been said to me i have to do what i need and i yes. feel like that could work what was very clear that you said is that you realized you had to take the pause internally. You needed to speak this line like you couldn't actually physically leave a pause because you were like, no, he needs to say this. There are people coming. We could be dead in five seconds, right? But you emotionally, while you were saying the line, were like, I'm taking the pause. I'm realizing what's happening. I realize what the fuck I'm saying right now. And so... That resonated because when you got to men, there was all of a sudden this, on a technical side, growl, but there was this part of your voice that literally came out as like, fuck, in this word of men. Because what was happening was your emotion and your thought process as the character of like, what the hell am I supposed to do right now came through in the energy of your voice. And all we heard was this just crazy, like, men, right? Like it was, it was tension filled and powerful and strong and rubbing on the vocal cords. Everything about it was excellent. And then the other thing I will say is when you got to honor, it was interesting there was this moment that you did something uh, that is one of my favorite phrases on the planet that I use all the time when it comes to acting. Um, I say you taste your words. Essentially, you had this moment when you were saying the word honor where every sound, every syllable, every vowel 
consonant noise that makes up this word of honor was emphasized and punctuated and twisted in the way that you're saying it, where you you essentially said it in this, I don't even know if I can replicate it, um, but it was this moment of almost as if you were spitting the word from your mouth, as if your entire being was like fucking honor, right? Like the whole face, the whole words, the sounds, we're chewing on and spitting out this word. But I was like, I need to do it different. I didn't <laughs> I didn't think about it like that. That's for sure. That's fair. I, I didn't even know that was a thing. It is. Um, it's my favorite thing. Uh, I am very big on the concept of there is no good, there is no bad, there is no wrong, there is no right. There are only ways to describe a performance that resonates with you um, and that uh, is different but somehow connected and has a similar attribute to everyone who hears it. So when I say taste your words, that means something different to you than it does to me. It always will, and it will mean something different to everyone who hears it and who tries it. And yet, when someone else tastes their words, every single person can go, oh, I get what you mean. I'm gonna ask you, to do this in the exact way we feel like it shouldn't be done. I want you to do the exact opposite. I'm not going to tell you what the exact opposite means. I'm not going to tell you what you should be feeling. I'm not going to tell you what you should be thinking. I just want you to remember what we've been doing and do the exact opposite of it. All right, whenever you're ready, give it a shot. We can do this, man. For king for country, for, for honor. You were like, oh my God, men, king, country, we can do this. <laughs> like, what for you is the opposite of what we've been doing? If we want to go back to the three um, specific mm. attributes, it was passionate, distraught, and seething. And I'm like, what is the exact opposite of a man who's on his last leg, literally and figuratively, <laughs> a, a man who is down to the wire, and instead of buckling down, he's going to stand up, even if it hurts, and do his best, even if he has no idea. Somebody who's so sarcastically happy <laughs> that you just don't want to listen to them. I guess that could be Valley Girl. I was going more for maybe some like a cheerleader or maybe like um, this might hit home with a few folks. A band kid before a performance. Oh if you know what no! I mean. <laughs> you know we're just like they're so happy. You know they we get to perform. Yay! You know I I used to be a band kid. No no hate no hate. Just that that's at least how I experienced it. You know everybody was so forced happy until all stress came. You know so. I love that exercise because. All of a sudden, you're like, none of this makes sense, and none of this works, and I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm doing it. Turn it up to 50 bajillion to the craziest archetype of this character you've ever seen, okay? Whenever you're ready, do it. We can do this, men. For king. For country. For honor. That did not feel right <laughs> off my tongue. <laughs> What you said where that did not feel right on your tongue is exactly what I wanted you to feel. Because now that we've done that, we're flipping back to what we had before and to feel it like you have never felt it before. Whatever that means, do it. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to close your eyes for me. I'm going to ask you to put your hands in a comfortable position, put your arms in a comfortable position, wherever you need them to be while you're sitting. Make sure that you don't have tension in your shoulders, you don't have tension in your arms, you don't have tension in your neck, you don't have tension in your head. You're going to take a big deep breath in with me and let it out. Another deep breath in and let it out. You're going to feel where your fingers are in the space. We're not going to move them. We're just going to feel where they are. We're going to feel where our hands are. We're going to know where our arms are. We're going to know where our shoulders are. We're going to know where our neck is. We're going to know where our head is. We're going to make sure we don't have tension in our jaw. 
We're gonna make sure we don't have tension in our eyebrows. We're gonna take another deep breath in and let it out. We're going to see rubble in front of us. We're going to see charred houses, broken bodies, pieces and parts of what used to be here. Living people gone, unrecognizable. We're going to see smoke on the horizon. We can feel it on our skin, the itchy, grimy texture that smoke and fire bring. We can smell the burning, the coal, the blood in the air. You can almost taste the iron from the blood that mixes with the dew and the smoke. You're going to see the few people left, the few friends that you have sitting, injured and bruised, with frowns on their faces, ready to look at the sky and die right here and now. Upset even that they're not already dead, that that blast that you just crawled up from with splinters in your feet and nails didn't kill them. You're gonna live in that for as long as you need to. See it, hear it, smell it, taste it, feel it, until you are ready to speak, and then you may do so whenever you are ready. We can do this, men. For king, for country, for honor. Well done. Did that help recenter you at all? It definitely did. I, I feel my heartbeat racing a little bit because I could feel the anger start to come up. Yes. Beautiful. So that is an exercise um, that they do in acting and I do like to do with my folks who are a bit more visual. Um, when you are able to see these things, it can create a good space when we let go of your physical body and we then bring it into sights and sounds and smells in our senses. Your mind brings it to you and then all of a sudden we are in this space where we're like, I don't have to think about how I sound and what I look like and who this character is. It's already here. So this is the point where I say to you, is there anything at all that you want to try, to learn, to experiment with, to play with, etc.? What if instead of him trying to talk to someone specifically, like he's talking like he's being passed down something, what if he's trying to point someone out? What if instead he's trying to actively call someone out, you you need to stand yes. not me anymore you this this is no longer me needing this this is you needing this i know i recognize this you need this you should stand come on you know yeah. what if it's more like instead of him being mentored and him trying what if he he already has this and now he needs to try to bring someone else up whether angered or just trying to help them right tell me who that person he's singling out is Create them for me. Anyone, right? Yes. That had to be this position. That had to be them. It'd be a rogue in their hero gallery. It, it would have to be the backstabber for these heroes. The person who is so distraught. That's what I was doing. Why am I even here? Why didn't it kill me? Why can't I pay for what I've done already? And then he looks at them like, no. You want to right the wrongs? You want to be able to do this. You want to be able to help. This is your moment. You know them. Why don't you show us what you know? You've experienced them. You've lived with them. They were your comrade. You I should know everything that. they have, right? Help us. You want to right your wrongs and you need to stand because the sky ain't going to open up. There ain't going to be no hands scooping you. For everything you've done, you might as well burn. Do you at least want a shot to be able to not think? Yes. Or do you want to sink in the deep below forever? Because yes. that's where you're going.
yes, I fully love this idea. We are running with this. I love that you are talking to what is essentially someone who was on the wrong side, the people they're fighting against, and now sees this destruction and terror that they have brought and went, oh my god. Like, I'm not, I've done so much wrong. I'm such a horrible person. I don't deserve to be here. And you're being like, nah, make up for what you did. You don't get death. That's too fucking easy for you. Like, (laughs) I love this. Let it affect your speech. Let it affect the way you say this. Whenever you're ready, go for it. We can do this, men, for king, for country, for honor. Don't stop. Do it again. Talk straight to that person. We can do this, men, for king, for country, for honor. Again, he's not hearing you. We can do this, men, for king, for country, for honor. Again, he doesn't serve your king. We can do this, men, for king. For country. For honor. Yeah, there it is. (laughs) That's what it was. That's what I was waiting for. Um, So the reason why I kept pushing you is because we have this tendency, most voice actors, most actors do this, where we get set in a very specific pace. A very specific, the word that's the term for it is cadence. It's the way that you say sentences and the uh, you tend to say them in a pattern. When we go to do dialogue, um, especially uh, uh, as a bit of a traditional acting route, we get stuck in the way that we say a line. We feel it, we're here for it, but for whatever reason we can't make it speed up or change or get rid of the punctuation. It just gets stuck. And so you were there and you were feeling it, but you were having this problem of we can do this men for king for country for honor and i don't want that right i don't want bum but um but um but um no 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 no. we got to change that up because what happened was we were doing a we can do this no you can't you don't fight with him he doesn't fight with you it's not a we so i kept pushing you because i needed you to understand that you're not talking to somebody who is in your crew, who knows you, who cares about you, who cares about these people. You're talking to a stranger. And so what happened was the more I pushed you, the more it came across as, look, I don't know why you fight. I don't know you. I don't know who you are. I don't give a fuck. Fight for you. Fight to redeem yourself. We can do this. Literally you and me. Not us, not a crew, you and me. It was this exasperation of like, we can do this. We. And you were talking directly to him. And especially when we got to For Honor, and we did For King, For Country, For Honor, there was this idea that we had from earlier that these are our people. It was still coming across as for our king, for our country. We are going for king, for country. These are the things you fight for. No, 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 no. He doesn't fight for those things. It became for king, for for country, fuck that shit, for honor. And you went down, you softened honor, you quieted honor. You took this moment of, you don't fight for king, you don't fight for country, and you went, but you fight for yourself. And it resonated really, really strongly. What did you feel? Did you feel a difference going through it those couple of times? First thing I could feel, honestly, whenever I was doing it, I'm not sure if anybody knows, I was looking directly at the camera by the end of it. As you were saying that he's not listening to you, I pictured that as him pretty much like just ignoring me, trying to push me aside, him telling me, no, I I don't. (laughs) And instead of me saying anything different, I was saying the exact same thing, just getting closer down the rubble everybody else is like wait what are you doing and i just i'm getting down on my knee at that point at the final point like come on meeting him eye to eye like n- like not even that far apart just for yourself for you they're gone you obviously know how bad they are 
You don't care about my feelings. You don't care about the crew. I can tell. Fight for your king, I guess. Fight for your country that you want. Fight for your honor. Because if you don't, you're dead. And I'm not going to have anybody dying in my ship. Yes. Not now. Yes. Exactly. And that is genuinely what came across. It stopped being this generalization and it started being very targeted and very personalized. Where it was, no, 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 no. Don't look at them. Look at me. Right? And that's what I wanted. And that was excellent. Thank you for this lovely session here today. We are done with this character in this session. You did beyond well. I love doing these sessions. I hope you enjoyed yourself at the very least. Um, I, at the very least, at the very most, I love this. What are you talking about? <laughs> for my YouTube folks, I'll see you next Wednesday. You can always join us live at 9 p.m. EST on YouTube or Twitch to join us for the next sessions, both Monday, voicing artists, original characters, and Wednesday for voice acting coaching. You can also be a part of voice acting coaching. Um, the form is currently closed because we're in through April, but give us into March and that form will reopen and you can join us live here and be coached by me. Make sure y'all go follow Josh um, on anything we have linked below and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.